It is November 1st, 2020. Uh, that means yesterday was Halloween. I hope you had a safe and happy Halloween. Yesterday you got all the treats. Today, am I getting tricked? I don't know. This is all coming off the top of my head, but it's crime <laughs> after crime. And I'm John Lorden, and with me, as always, is... Danielle Helen. And I also probably have had way too many treats at this point. <laughs> I'm serious. Way too many. Because no one likes Tootsie Rolls in this household, so I just take them all. And then oh, I usually absolutely. eat them all. <laughs> yes, Tootsie Rolls. Yeah, love some Tootsie Rolls. Um, yeah, we uh, had a bag of Halloween candy that just showed up at our house uh, yesterday. So that somehow got opened and a bunch of those have now disappeared. Mm, and interesting. It's a mystery. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to solve that one, but, uh, maybe there will be some mysteries solved at crime con house arrest on November 20, 21st. Are you joining us? Are you going to be there? House Arrest is a fully immersive, interactive online experience that I will be at, just saying, that will incorporate <laughs> all of the best things about CrimeCon, from big name personalities to world-class experts, workshops, demos, exhibitor booths, and even Podcast Row. Big name personalities. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely Danielle Hallen's going to be there. <laughs> I'm just going to be big personality. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to chat with us? Do you want to sit in on a special edition of Crime After Crime live? Then you have to be there. Tickets are on sale and we can get you 10% off. Just go to crimecon.com forward slash house arrest and use code crime after 2020 when you're checking out. And we will see you guys at CrimeCon House Arrest streaming live on November 21st. Or dun, if dun, you're, dun. Art yeah, <laughs> give me some music, Daniel. If you're artistically inclined, maybe we can get you in for free. That is right. So we actually had a fan submit some artwork and now we have our new pick your winner mug and we want to see more of your work and maybe your art will become a new merch item in our store. You can send your art into crime after crime at lordandarts.com or tweet it to us at Crime After Pod, and you'll be in the running for a free ticket to CrimeCon House Arrest, a Crime After Crime gift package, and if we use your art on a merch item, you're gonna be the first to get one for free. All right, guys, let's see those art skills. Entries have to be received in the next two weeks. The deadline is November 14th, so you better get started. Well, they can get started after today's Dan episode, Danielle. Today's Danielle episode. Today's Danielle episode. <laughs> is this foreshadowing that I'm gonna win? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know because right now it's time for voting results with danielle for the last episode felony food stirs and i'm wondering did those flies that i sent from minnesota that also happened to land on mike pence's head did they come through for me danielle what happened all right guys so on the twitter poll ooh. 29% for me and 71% for John. That is Woo! a huge one. I knew that was going to happen, man. You yes. brought it. You brought it last month. I had to. It was it was the third month in a row without a mug and I need my coffee. <laughs> it's important. And then on the website poll, oh boy, another blow to me. 18% and 82% for John. That brings us to the total of one for me, one for John so far for season three which means yes. after a very long time i finally get to hand you your mug back give it up give it up it's finally home you're home it's okay you're home. it's okay now yeah did she treat you well <laughs> hey danielle there's there's lipstick on this yes probably sorry yeah. i didn't have time to clean it <laughs> i was expecting to keep my streak going <laughs> yeah yeah well the cup is back home where it belongs we are now one and one for season three and i mm -hmm. want to give a very special thank you to my flies for helping i know they did it. they did it real well <laughs> man they had me all messed up <laughs> yeah also a big thank you to we had over a thousand votes at mm -hmm. the website and of course uh, we usually get several hundred on the twitter as well so thank you to everyone that voted yep. really appreciate you guys well the holidays are quickly approaching and thankfully we're going to get out of this dumpster fire that we call 2020, but we've got a few more hurdles to get through first, including the real world version of the Hunger Games Black Friday. Retailers get everyone worked up into a frenzy by advertising deals weeks in advance, of course, on limited supplies. So you have to be the first or you're not getting that amazing deal on a PlayStation 4. 
well, you can be first mm-hmm. or you can just be nasty, pushy, and in some cases, well-armed. Oh boy. A lot of people think Black Friday is called that because it is a profitable day that brings the financial ledgers of businesses out of the red and into the black. But according to Business Insider, the earliest use of the name was an event that occurred back on September 24th, 1869. Two investors named Jay Gould and Jim Fisk intentionally drove up the price of gold, trying to create a fake demand and then sell when the price was high. But instead, they caused a market crash. The stock market dropped 20% and foreign trade stopped completely. In the late 1980s, the story about Black Friday, meaning the stores were profitable, caught on. And we've been fist fighting over $2 waffle irons ever since. (laughs) Danielle and I worked hard trying to find the best Black Friday crime stories. And it's time to get started with Danielle's. I am so excited. Oh my goodness. This was such an interesting and fun topic. Yeah. Now, everyone that shops during Black Friday is typically shopping for one of two reasons, or I'm making this up to make myself feel better about the reasons why I shop on Black Friday. (laughs) Hint, hint. (laughs) Either to get a good deal or to watch as others go crazy over a good deal. And I'm usually the latter. I -hmm. learned the hard way too many times that most Black Friday items that seem so great are usually just a cheaply made version of what I actually want. However, there are some deals that are apparently worth pepper spraying for, fighting for, stampeding for. I even watched an unfortunate video where a woman stole an item from the hands of a child. Mm. But that got me to thinking about theft during Black Friday, which I think, honestly, I think that's something that's overlooked a little bit. Yeah. Because we're so focused on, hey, we're spending our money on a good deal that we forget about theft. Right. While there are most people out there looking to pay a better price, there is a select few that want the price to be knocked all the way down to free. Employees are typically so busy making sure items stay stocked and shoppers don't fist fight like we were speaking about that a few of these people get through the cracks. We all know that Black Friday is one of the deadliest holidays, but theft increases as well, in general, 2%. Theft outside of the home, so at a retail store, a parking lot, increases 28%. And when you look specifically at hot items like video games, electronics, you know, whatever toy all the kids are freaking out for that year... That's up 42%. Wow. People leave their bags behind in cars, encouraging those with sticky fingers to snag what's inside. I've even seen a few scary stories where someone's been followed home after being spotted with a prized item. There are some people out there who have it really figured out, though. They let the chaos of the moment be their disguise, and they go straight for what they want. And sometimes they make it a family tradition. Hmm. On Black Friday in 2017... A target at 1250 North Port Washington Road in Grafton, Wisconsin, was busy trying to keep shoppers happy. They had been open for just a short time so far, but the store was already packed full. Shelves were starting to clear out. And usually in these kinds of crowds, people don't really stand out. But there was one group that caught the eye of one of Target's loss prevention employees. It was just before midnight and a family, like so many others, were loading up multiple carts with quite a few of the very pricey electronics that happened to be on sale that year, including one of our favorites, John, the Xbox. Yes, <laughs> Xbox absolutely. <laughs> Have to get that one. Mm-hmm. Now, while seeing this isn't strange by any means, the employee could not help but feel like they recognized this family. After watching their behavior for a bit of time, the employee had a very alarming realization. A prior year, another family had come into the same Grafton Target on Black Friday. They snagged a few key items that disappeared into their bags, and they ran from the store without paying. Mm. But this year, by the time it was noticed that they left without paying, they had already transferred the items into their getaway car, and they left. Wow. Their previous victory may have led them to believe that they would be able to pull a stunt like that again and get away with it again. Why would you go to the same target? It's not like there's other targets. (laughs) There's no talent. You know, criminals sometimes are not the smart. (laughs) Wow. It's just mind blowing. I know. The target employee was so sure that it was them again. So they quickly called authorities in hopes of catching this family in the act. They had gotten away with it once, and they did not want them to get away with it again. Sure enough, just like the year prior, the family ran from the Target without paying for any of their items, just this time with a little bit of a different method. Everything was loaded into carts. The audacity. 
(laughs) (laughs) Authorities sneakily pulled into the parking lot and somehow managed to locate the family in the sea of people. They noticed they were standing by a car with two entire cartloads of stolen electronics, like all (laughs) electronics. When they called to the family to stop, all of them scrambled. One adult took off running on foot while two other adults jumped into the car and bolted out of the parking lot. But they forgot something important. And the I, kid? Dang it, you, you guessed it. Are you kidding me? They forgot one of their kids. <laughs> they, for, they, they didn't forget the stolen items, but they left behind a few of their minor accomplices, including a girl that was only 11 years old. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it gets so much worse, John. <laughs> but I that's know. pretty bad, Daniel. How could it get worse? Oh, Are just, you kidding me? Just wait. <laughs> so authorities at this point took everyone down to the police station in hopes of getting some answers for not only this year, but to kind of look into the prior year because, I mean, what mm-hmm. are the chances? They're, at this point, they kind of knew this wasn't a different family. Plus, all they had were minors. None of the names of these individuals have been released. And they also had to locate their families. They clearly didn't right. act on this alone. They yep. found out that the group had taken over $1,400 in electronics from the store in total. So there was definitely a mastermind behind all of this. And they were really relying on the kids to talk to figure out who it was. When they spoke to the 11-year-old, she wouldn't give up much information other than the fact that she had been at Target with daddy's people without stating who daddy's people actually were. She's being a little hard case Mm -hmm. at 11. Yep, sure was, man. (laughs) I wonder if they were shining a little light in her face. You're going to talk. And she's like, no. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. She she did tell them, though, that her mother was a woman named Gail McCurry. But other Mm. than that, probably because she wanted to be picked up. um, But other than that, her lips were sealed. So authorities decided to call Gail, alert her that her daughter was at the police station and she needed to be picked up. They explained the situation. And they attempted to get information from Gail about who her daughter had been with that night, because maybe if they could get that, they would be led to the thieves. Mm -hmm. Gail was short. She was also expressing shock that her daughter was part of this kind of plot, but she said that she had no clue who her daughter was claiming to be with, daddy's people. She also told authorities that she couldn't pick her daughter up from the police station, which they thought was a little strange. She explained to authorities that she was working the third shift that night, which, you know, kind of makes sense because it's Black Friday and that she would have to make other arrangements and let them know. Now, they were a little bit shocked still because they figured this would be, you know, kind of considered an emergency situation, even if you are working Black Friday. As a mother, I feel like most mothers would be like, look, I got to go. I got to go. I've got to go to the police station and solve what's going on. But that clearly wasn't going to happen. As they continued to try to get information from the little girl, they also started to zone in on the other miners that had been at the scene. And a few things that they found had them scratching their head. While the 11-year-old was quiet, a few of the other miners were making phone calls and having very interesting conversations. (laughs) It sounded like one of them was speaking to someone that had actually been there that night while in the police station on the the phone. Authorities were listening in and ended up hearing a very detailed conversation about items that had been left in a secondary car that was still in the parking lot. (laughs) So they had unloaded more than their two carts and more than two carts that they left with. And one of them had been packed into a car that was left behind. They explained that most of the items that were in that car were the ones that were higher in price. Uh, you know, such as the Xbox One. And the caller made it very clear that they wanted that Xbox One as their own and someone needed to go and pick this car up because if they weren't going to, you know, get away with all of their goods, they at least wanted what authorities didn't know was left behind. Yeah, send the 11-year-old to uh, pick that car up and get me my Xbox. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, these (laughs) adults are now calling these kids, you know, being like, hey, you need to go pick up a car. Terrible. But in a shocking twist... They went to find out who the person on the other end of the line was. And it was none other than Gail McCurry, the 11 year old's mother who claimed to be working that night. Oh my goodness. Well, she was. She was working. She still had. She sure was, man. Yeah, still crimes to commit. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Authorities decided to look up Gail McCurry's driver's license to see if it was possible that she was someone that ran from the authorities at Target. You know, because maybe she just sent them. You never know. Mm -hmm. And it led them to probation photos, as well as a very lengthy criminal record going back to 2002, with most of those being theft charges and other misdemeanors in numerous counties around the area. One of the officers that arrived on scene that night was fairly certain from the ID and the different probation photos that they remembered Gail being there. So they asked Target to send over surveillance footage so they could be sure. And sure enough, Gail was one of the individuals that jumped in the car and left. So this means that not only did this woman encourage her daughter to take part in said theft, yeah. then left her behind yeah. for authorities in an attempt to save herself, but she also then refused to pick her daughter up. Yeah. From the police station claiming to be working and totally. She thought she was being set up. She was She like, thought she was being set up. She's not going to come in and have them slap the cuffs on her. She's got Xbox to play. Yeah, man. Forget her 11 year old daughter. She's not doing that. Well, not only all that, Danielle, she also trained her 11 year old daughter that if she was caught, blame daddy and daddy's <laughs> friends. <laughs> oh, but this is it just keeps going. Oh, we're not there yet. Oh, uh -oh. man. Uh -oh. <laughs> so authorities went back to the 11-year-old to let her know that they had basically caught her mother red-handed. And she did. She broke down. Poor girl. She admitted that she initially lied to authorities to protect her parents. Oh, no. Plural. Uh-oh. I thought at least there'd be one decent parent, Danielle. <laughs> Meaning that not only her mother abandoned her that night, but so did her father. Oh, terrible. Authorities took another look at the surveillance footage from the Target and found that one of the men matched a 35-year-old man named Sean Bay Harvey. Mm. So she really was with her daddy's people, a.k.a. her entire family. Yeah. Sean Bay Harvey himself didn't have a criminal record, but that was about to change. And while all of this is going on with the 11-year-old Gail Sean Bay, they're trying to figure all this out, the plot continues to thicken. Someone finally showed up to pick up all the other minors that had been left in the parking lot. This man casually walks into the police station saying that his name was Tyrese Lowe and he was there to pick up the kids after the incident. Now, okay. since this is exactly what the authorities were waiting for, someone to come pick these minors up, it initially didn't seem strange until one of the minors didn't use the name Tyrese upon seeing him and instead called out to the man as Donnell. Oh, interesting. Okay. So at this point, one of the sergeants that had seen the surveillance footage took a look at this man and noticed that he looked very familiar to another man that was in the surveillance footage. So he was sat down, questioned, and they eventually found that he was an 18-year-old named Donnell Finch. So now, again, the adults not only abandoned the minors to flee the scene, but then got another teenager involved to pick up the kids to they themselves not be found out by police. So they're just sacrificing these young individuals just left and right. And how would they even think that that would work? Like, I don't think law enforcement's just going to be like, hey, any random adult that shows up, yeah, turn these kids over to them. Like, I'm sure they're going to do some type of verification about, is this a parent? Can oh, we at I least know. contact a parent? You know, I mean. And can you imagine how scared that 18 year old might, I'm going to say might have been because there's no <laughs> yeah. telling. But like, Who knows? there is it just casually walked in pretending to be somebody else. <laughs> I am here to pick him up now. And they're yeah. like, Donnell, and he's like, no, wait, be quiet. Are you familiar with the story of, uh, like, the musical Oliver or the story Oliver Twist? Uh-uh, I'm not super familiar with it. Yeah, there's it, there's basically, like, a, a guy that rounds up a bunch of children that are poor, and then oh the, he has all these poor kids doing crimes for him. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Finch ended up being arrested with retail theft greater than $5,000 because, let me just say, they found the secondary vehicle that they thought were keeping a secret, which is even fascinating from the standpoint of the adult saying all that knowing that they were in jail. Yeah. yeah. But either way, they located the rest of the more high-priced items. Uh, so, that number went up greatly. And he was also charged with two counts of obstructing an officer. Donnell had actually been the getaway driver that took off with Gail and Sean Bay, the father of the 11 year old was the one that took off on foot. Mm. Now both Gail and Sean Bay also were located and they were charged with retail theft, obstructing an officer, as well as contributing to the delinquency of a minor. And this ended up causing authorities to look back into the previous theft from Target. 
They spoke to the officer that recognized them from this year, and they were almost positive it was the exact same group. So that year, apparently, the loss prevention member in Grafton had been notified that there was a theft at another Target in West Milwaukee. It was Black Friday, so they were used to keeping an eye out for these things. Um, But at this point, they knew who to look out for. So the loss prevention member said that around 1030 that previous year, the same group came in to that Target. They matched the description, so they kept an eye on them. And this group was checking out iPads and eventually left the store with seemingly nothing. But the women involved had been carrying very large bags that magically appeared full. Mm Mm-hmm. So authorities were alerted, but again, they had the same kind of technique where they had a getaway car waiting for them. So they were able to easily flee the scene and they were never caught until they had the guts to do it again. And authorities were even able to go all the way back and check surveillance footage from that year. And they 100% matched Gail and Shambe. I don't know if any of the children were there that time. I know that there were a few other women with them. They saw them take the iPads. They saw them leave. And man, I guess after that successful theft on Black Friday, they were like, okay, we'll do it again. And since it was so easy that time and we never got caught, we're willing to risk, you know, just throwing everything at carts so we can get more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because it does kind of address what I was talking about. They did the year before hit multiple targets. Mm -hmm. So, but you would also like if you've ever worked in retail, you know that they do inventory procedures at some point. They might do it monthly or yeah. only a few times a year. But at some point, they would have noticed, oh, my God, these specific items got hit hard. Yeah. And don't you think they would implement some measures the following year to try to take that on? Like it, You would think. And I maybe they did. Maybe it yeah. was the extra security, and that's why they noticed it the second time. I mean, you had a guy that you know is, is recognizing the people, but... I know Crazy. that I know that at the Target where I used to live, um, it was a very populated area. There were tons of people there and a ton of teenagers, and there were yeah. there were a lot of problems with theft. And I know the only thing they did is they took, I guess, you know, along these same lines, someone that was checking inventory and making sure there wasn't, you know, loss prevention and all of that. And they ended up just putting him in plain clothes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And Adam walk around Target, but I couldn't help but laugh every time because I'm like, you know, it's the same kids coming back here every time. You're not fooling them just because you're dressed in regular clothes as a man <laughs> yeah. standing like in the, you know, women's section looking at bathing suits. I'm like, yeah. you're not well, fooling anybody. Yeah, but there's also a conversation for maybe it'd be better if the kids would notice. Uh oh, you know, they're the loss prevention guys here again. Yep. We're, we're not going to be able to steal today. <laughs> I'm telling you, other than that, I mean, good grief. But man, that's quite the family tradition. I mean, and that's the thing. Thanksgiving's full of that. Family traditions, Black Friday. Like I always make, you know, dinner for my whole family Thanksgiving. And then usually early in the morning, Black Friday, I go out to people watch. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because that's essentially what I do. But could you imagine being like, all right, we're doing it again this year, guys. Everyone pile up and let's go steal from Target. (laughs) And they were serious about it, too. It sounds like they were stealing way more than they would just want for their family. Like, they were stealing to resell. And, yeah. Wow. Oh, absolutely. And I just sit here and think about, I mean, how do you put so many things in your cart? You have multiple carts. And you just walk out. Right. Right. I'm also, like, I could never, and I'm such a, obviously, a rule abider. But, like, I can't. I would... I would immediately, if I, I would tell myself, I would barely get out the door and be like, I did it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's I'm so, me. I'm so it's serious. Me. Okay, cuff me. I'll yeah. go to jail now. <laughs> Your kids would get away and you would be the one left behind. I know Raylan would be screaming. She'd be like, what are you doing? I want this iPad. <laughs> oh, good grief. The little rebel in the group. I, it would be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's kind of sad that it, it fell is. down on this 11 year old. Yeah. And just and who first, knows what that she, home life is like. Oh and boy. yeah. Oh, terrible. I know. And the mugshot's even funnier because this Gail is just, she looks so content with herself. Like she just looks so pleased. Mm. That's like the best word I can use to describe it. She's just very yeah. pleased with herself. <laughs> she's getting a free photo. Maybe uh-huh. she's going to use that on social media. Probably. Um, do we know, uh, sentencing or I wasn't able to find anything else, which was really frustrating. There were, I was actually even more shocked because I even like very randomly stumbled across this, like very deep into my searching. 
Yeah. And I mean, it's such a fascinating story to me because I mean, look at the play on it, man, like a family tradition, but just like how you wouldn't expect during the holidays. I would have thought there were way more articles on it and there wasn't there wasn't much at all. Yeah, it it kind of I was actually thinking about a topic of like criminal families because mm-hmm. we've had a couple stories. I remember one that you told yep. about a Walmart where they were stealing car batteries. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, so we've we've had a little theme around this a little bit. Maybe we'll have to pull mm-hmm. an episode together on that at mm-hmm. some point. Wow. Wow. Well, that is one of the two stories. Mm-hmm. We've got another one to get to, but before that, we're going to take this short break. I am a happy Mint Mobile customer and my wallet is even happier. With Mint Mobile, not only are you going to get great network coverage and save some serious cash doing it, now they have a plan with unlimited phone, text, and data. That's right, unlimited data for only 30 bucks a month. Think about that for a second. Are you paying two or three times that price for your current provider? Even more? I was, and I was ready for a change. The activation process was super easy. It only took me a few minutes and my coverage is identical to my old big guy provider. Best of all, I didn't have to spend hours in a strip mall store waiting for my number to be called. Everything was handled online and the savings are in my pocket. If you're not 100% satisfied, there is a seven day money back guarantee. It's no risk and all reward with MetMobile. Use your own phone and you can easily bring your phone number and contact over to Mint Mobile. Need 5G? They've got it. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 30 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash crime after crime. That's mintmobile.com slash crime after crime. Cut your unlimited wireless bill to 30 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash crime after crime. Break up with your old provider like my family did and start saving a mint with Mint Mobile. Since I found HelloFresh, cooking at home has never been so easy, fun, and delicious. HelloFresh delivers a box right to my door with step-by-step recipes and pre-measured ingredients. Everything I need to pull together a delicious meal in about 30 minutes. They also have lower prices for larger boxes, so feeding my whole family means more savings. This month, I made a tasty and filling vegetarian quesadilla, and that same recipe taught me how to make my own salsa. I didn't know it was so easy and so good. For someone with no skills in the kitchen like me, HelloFresh isn't just about making a great dinner, I'm learning along the way. HelloFresh is also focused on giving back. In 2019, they donated over 2.5 million meals to charity. You can help families in need too by checking out their Beyond the Box program. HelloFresh has an amazing offer for our listeners. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash crime after crime 90 and use code crime after crime 90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Get contactless delivery right to your doorstep and skip that trip to the grocery store. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash crime after crime 90 and use code crime after crime 90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Try HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit today. Welcome back, everybody, and please support these great companies that believe in crime after crime and John's cooking skills. <laughs> <laughs> yes. HelloFresh, thank you for the cooking skills. And I just want to stop and say, I don't know if I maybe I say this every episode now. I literally am a customer of these companies. Like I, mm-hmm. I literally I'm so happy that we're able to tell you guys about services that I actually personally use. Uh, and I even cut over. You know, Mint Mobile initially sent us a card where we can test the service and all that. I'm not even using their free service. I said, I want to support companies yeah, like exactly. this. I signed up. I got my phone cut over. My wife's phone's cut over. I'm, I'm, we're not, I'm being honest with you guys. I'm being serious with you guys. These are both really good companies. I really do love them. And I'm so proud that uh, yeah. our, our little show here got to the <laughs> point where we're able to help them out and they're helping us out. It's a great thing. I know. And you guys already know how much I love HelloFresh. I <laughs> like harass, yeah. every, I harass everyone. Man, there's salsa verde enchiladas. I'm never getting over it. Yeah, I even did man. like this sausage skillet meal one day and I want to eat that at least three times a week from now on. <laughs> like at the very, very least. <laughs> Well, I guess it's that time. We've got another story to tell you guys. And I'm kind of excited about this story because it contains the basic elements, I think, of what we're all worried about 
with Black Friday crime. Oh, no. You know, it's it's kind of just what I consider is kind of like the this is the flat line, the baseline yeah. for what could go wrong. <laughs> this is a story. And I want to thank Ruben for this. This is a story that I call Ruben's Decisions. While <laughs> Daniel's already laughing. Oh, no. <laughs> While Black Friday originated on an actual Friday. We're all now used to Black Friday events starting on Thanksgiving Day. First, it was stores opening at midnight to provide doorbusters. Then it rolled back to 8 p.m., then 6 p.m. For the past few years, there have been many stores that have an entire day of Black Friday shopping on Thanksgiving Thursday. 23-year-old Ruben Garcia had a decision to make. He could stay at home with his family or... He could head out and try and snag some of those sweet early Black Friday deals that were happening the night of Thanksgiving, November 26th, 2015. Maybe he could even go out and try to find himself a brand new flat panel TV. So that's what he did. He arrived at a Walmart store in Northeast El Paso, Texas, and joined several hundred others hunting for the best holiday bargains. Thankfully, Walmart was smart enough to have hired several off-duty police officers to help with security and crowd control. So everything should be fine, right, Danielle? Never goes this way. (laughs) You would think, but no, no, no. Yeah, you would think, but I'm telling this story, so obviously it's not. (laughs) Ruben was looking around and saw holiday magic happening right in front of him. Several Walmart employees brought out a pallet of flat panel televisions and began unwrapping the plastic. These TVs were an amazing deal at only $129 for a 50-inch screen. And there were plenty for everyone. Actually, there's a video of this. And by my count, there were maybe 12 televisions. And somewhere close to 100 people advancing towards them, Ruben being one of them. No, I'm not very good at math. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> 12 doesn't have, divide have into 100 too well. Yeah, I've tried well, it. Unless it doesn't you, work. Unless you break it. <laughs> uh, as soon as a few boxes were free of the plastic bindings, customers started pulling boxes and madness ensued. Quote, everybody just goes and starts grabbing, pushing and shoving, just trying to get a TV, said Lucy Augusto. A brawl broke out with people yelling, screaming, grabbing televisions away from each other, and the off-duty cops were scrambling through the crowd trying to douse one hot spot after the next. The stack of TVs was literally gone in a few seconds. The giant boxes swinging out to the perimeters of the crowd, being grabbed at by other people and new arguments ensuing, including some punches being thrown here or there. Quote, it was at first entertaining, and then it got scary. (laughs) Yeah, I can see that. (laughs) I like that he thought it was at first entertaining. I was afraid of getting punched or something, said Adolfo Agarza. He recorded a video showing the instant frenzy happening around the discounted televisions. For our listeners and viewers, here's a little bit of what it looked and sounded like. And for Danielle. Oh, no. She is in total shock this whole time. <laughs> oh my gosh. People are so, you know, this reminds me of Black Friday reminds me of the purge. <laughs> yes. Like nobody even cares anymore. Like it's like fend for yourself. Like all rules go out the window. That was madness. Wasn't that crazy? But Danielle, it's $129 50 inch TV. I mean, come on, that deal, that, that deal is insane. It's, it's the deal that's making this happen. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah, of a television that is like specifically made horribly just for Black Friday to trick people into buying it. They're paying for exactly what they're getting. Oh, my goodness gracious. And people are just, you know. Yeah. Well, interestingly, in that clip I played you, you did see one woman punch a man who took Mm -hmm. the TV from her. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's not even what today's story is about. That's not even the actual incident. That's just what's happening around. Are you joking? No, at the at the time of this of this incident. Everything Um, about that was very alarming. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruben was not in that particular shot. There's another camera that got an angle on Ruben, which of course we'll be sharing with the audience here in a moment too. But uh, before I continue, don't you wish you were there, Daniel? Doesn't oh, that look like fun? Yeah, if I was from the safety like of behind another aisle. <laughs> that's what i do i just like sit back and watch i will sit forever in target i'll be like oh this is so fascinating yeah you know um for a while i actually got into the tradition of watching video footage like that at mm -hmm. home just yeah. on friday like i would just make a thing out of it like hey i want to see some crazy black friday stuff but i'm staying at home to see it poor ruben realized he wasn't going to be able to score one of the 129 dollars tvs unless he had a special opportunity and that's when he saw it one woman who was clearly too old to be good at brawling with dozens of other people in a Walmart went down to the ground. She was crying and asking for help, and she was carrying one of the coveted televisions. I'm certain Ruben considered that if he was a nice guy and helped bring her back up to safety, perhaps she would thank him by letting him have the television. But he could definitely get the television if instead... He just stepped on her and pulled on the box hard enough. So that's what he did. Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, why? Ruben. I don't know. I don't know why, Ruben. Oh, goodness. In the middle of the frenzy, one of the off-duty cops, a three-year veteran of the force, saw what was happening and made his way directly over to Reuben. A struggle began as the officer was attempting to pull Reuben away and restrain him. The cop wound up putting his hands on Reuben's neck. Customer Lucy Augusto said, We told him to drop the TV and the guy kept saying, I had it first. I had it first. Reuben found himself with another decision to make. You have an officer's hands around your neck. Do you comply? apologize, and perhaps the cop would let you go like he's been doing with the dozens of other people he's been dealing with in the past few minutes. Maybe Ruben would even be able to go home in time for leftover turkey and a football game on his new TV. Or you can make sure you're definitely going home with your new TV if you punch and then choke the officer. So that's what he did, Danielle. <laughs> this is like a terrifying version of those like choose your own adventure books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to point out all the different places where Ruben could have gone right or gone left. Man, and, and he went like, wrong. <laughs> he's like, I'm just going to go the most extreme route possible. Yep. Oh what Ruben gosh. didn't count on was the second off-duty officer that approached. Quote, luckily, the other cop came and pulled out his taser and everyone backed away from the cop that was arresting that guy, Lucy Augusto said. The second officer helped gain control of Ruben, stripped him of his discounted television and booked him into the El Paso County Detention Facility on a charge of assault and battery on a public servant. Ruben's bail was set at $5,000, which, Danielle, I know you're not great mm -hmm. with math, but that would not buy you a lot. Of $129 television. That is a lot of $129 televisions. You could probably fill your entire living room with televisions at that point. And I just want to point out something very interesting real quick. I find it... I don't even know the right word to describe it. I'll just say interesting. I find it very interesting that they are all not scared of each other and being stepped on, potentially suffocated, things broken, punched in the face. But the second a cop pulls out a taser, they're all like, oh... <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that, that's some electronics you don't want to mess with. <laughs> um, I also want to put, point out that his bail being set at five thousand dollars, even if he just bought a regularly priced TV. Oh yeah, man. Would have been way up. cheaper than that. Yeah, way <laughs> cheaper. Uh, people often confuse the terms assault and battery, but there are two distinct crimes. However, mm -hmm. they can be combined in charging. Information I reviewed at San Diego Criminal Lawyers Blog.com stated that under California Penal Code 240, assault is defined as the attempt to use force or violence against someone else. Battery, on the other hand, results in the actual use of force or violence on someone else. Actual injury does not have to occur for battery charges as long as the unlawful touching and force was committed. Assault and battery charges against a police officer are another story, though. Whenever someone is accused of assaulting a police officer, on duty or off, the penalties they will face will always be steeper. Public servants include judges, firefighters, police, and process servers. 
one commits this crime when they intentionally and harmfully harm a peace officer or other protected class while they are performing his or her duties. When you committed the battery, you must have reasonably known that they were a public servant attempting to perform their duties, which is very unfortunate for Ruben because the off-duty officers were wearing their uniforms. I was so, going to ask about that, yeah. Yeah, it was very clear that this wasn't another customer trying to take the TV that Ruben, Ruben took from the elderly lady that fell down. Um, assault against a police officer is either a misdemeanor or felony pu punishable by imprisonment of one year and a fine of $2,000. If charged as a felony, you could face up to three years imprisonment and a $10,000 fine. So that's what they did to Ruben. Ruben wound up pleading guilty in August of 2016 to assault on a public servant. He received three years of probation and 180 hours of community service. There were no criminal charges filed related to the woman he was stepping on when he was trying to tear the television away from her, and her name has never been publicly released. Oh, poor lady. Yeah. Quote, it's not worth it to hit a cop or even hurt yourself to get that item just to save a few dollars, said Lucy Augusto. It's just not worth it. A YouTube account called Luli Love, which I think might be Lucy Augusto's. It only has 120 subscribers, but they posted a video of the scuffle. That video now has over 1.4 million views, and we're showing a bit of it here to the YouTube audience right now. If you still feel like going to find a great deal on Black Friday after viewing that video, you must be training to be a UFC fighter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Walmart would have a very interesting perspective on this, despite people that were there describing it as a brawl. The release from law enforcement actually calling it Black Friday Melee, and some media sources referring to it as a massive clash, Walmart thinks of it differently. A Walmart spokesperson told Fox 14 that the incident from Thursday night was not a Black Friday brawl, but an altercation between two people. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, that's all. Just, you saw the footage, Danielle. That was clearly, that was just, just two people having an argument over a television. That was not a brawl. I'm telling you the length that these companies are willing to go to, man. Yeah, I, I think they were terrified of just the oh, PR yeah. of, of associating the mm -hmm. store to that term. Um, but honestly, did they not look at the video from the yeah. same incident? Because it wasn't. Walmart doesn't have already a whole list like longer yeah. than even possible <laughs> yeah um because the videos alone there's uh there's the video with ruben and there's the other video that i showed danielle and you can see that there's a woman punching a man in the face there we've got multiple fights if nothing else this is not just about the two people but that whole thing looked like a terrifying mosh pit yeah yeah, exactly. With with a big heavy item swinging yes. over people's heads and then other people grabbing it. And yeah. Those yeah. TVs are so heavy. I just yep. bought like a 55 inch, I think, not that long ago. And mm -hmm. I mean, even like a brand new, like very recent model where they, I'm sure, try to make it as light as possible is very heavy and yeah. awkward. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm honestly surprised people didn't get more hurt than they did. That one corner, man. Mm-hmm. As a mom, I'm like, watch your eyes <laughs> every time I'm like watching that video. And I'm like, please cover your eyeball. <laughs> I know there's a lot of corners swinging around in that video. Oh, man. It gives me yeah. nightmares. Yeah. Uh, I do think that Walmart's PR team should start training criminal defense attorneys, especially with their point of view there. Mm -hmm. you Just, know, a, it's, you know. Yeah. It's, it's not a murder. It was a relieving of life. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just like, how can we twist this to make yeah. it sound not as bad? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, what, what are they trying to charge you with? Armed robbery? Hmm, no, I think they mean weapons supported acquisition. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they, maybe they need to hire you. <laughs> You're on a roll with this. You like that? Yeah, I can help you guys out, Walmart. Hey, maybe you should sponsor the show, but you probably won't after today's episode. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Thankfully, law enforcement can breathe a huge sigh of relief this year as Walmart has decided to close mm -hmm. their stores on Thanksgiving Day. As a matter of fact, most retailers are abandoning, abandoning efforts to hold doorbuster sales due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Many retailers are starting their Black Friday pricing weeks early, so people have plenty of time and don't have to rush a particular location, and several retailers are offering the same steep discounts online. I think that means Ruben 
doesn't have a decision to make this Thanksgiving. It's online shopping for him or nothing. Thank you, El Paso Times, MySanAntonio.com, Private Officer Breaking News, San Diego Criminal Lawyers Blog, Fox TV, Mashable, and Wikipedia for information contributing to today's story. Good grief. <laughs> I'm being so serious. Like, I've always thought Black Friday is ridiculous, but looking into this topic and seeing these stories has just blown my mind even more than I thought. Possible. Oh, Daniel, wait, wait until we get into some stats that we're going to talk about here pretty soon. Oh, um, I just wanted to touch on a couple things here, though, mm -hmm. Danielle. Uh, the I think there might have been some risk that could have easily been in, been avoided if mm -hmm. they didn't bring out the palette of televisions like that. Mm hmm. Um, cause those are a big item like that. Like they should have kept those up front near the checkout area. And maybe you have some system where people grab a ticket for yeah, it or something like, you know, Toys R Us used to have this thing where their most expensive toys, you, you would only see them in a glass cabinet and then you would have to pull a ticket and take it to the front and they would go to the back and get yeah. it. And, um, so it, yeah, it just seemed a little unnecessary to me that you would have an item that large, when you have a mob, possible mob mentality issue going on like that, and you're like, hey, here's the best deal in the store, and here's this big giant item, and we've only got you know a dozen of them. Go at it. It's so ridiculous. It honestly reminds me of you know when everything started happening with like toilet paper. <laughs> and yeah. like cleaning sprays and stuff. I'll never forget going into an aisle, and they'd like cart it out, some like Lysol, and everyone was like, Wah! and I was like, wait a minute, it's... It's yeah. not November yet, please. <laughs> I know it. I know it. There's got to be um, some better way of doing it. Yeah. I, I did also notice another retailer that ran into um, an instance of trying to disassoci disassociate their name with the term Black Friday violence, uh, and that was Toys R Us. Uh, I was actually considering covering this story, but essentially there was a shootout between two men in a Toys R Us, and both the men died. Uh, it was oh originally, gosh. I think, their wives that were fighting, and Toys R Us PR team rolled out, and they were just trying to. This had nothing to do with Black Friday. These were people that had other things that they were fighting over. <laughs> like, who do they think is actually going to fall for that? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're just worried about yeah. having a permanent association with that name. I did also go looking for other criminal charges related to Ruben. Thankfully, I didn't find any. So I'm hoping that maybe. The decisions that he made on on this fateful night, maybe they've steered him clear, and and he's doing much better now. I sure hope, hope so, because that was, I mean, that was like a string of a string of bad ones. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I hope he has a decent TV now, oh, me so too. we can just avoid all this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good grief! All right, as usual, um, we do have some extra stories, and we've got some extra time, but we've also got some crime stats that we wanted to share with you guys about Black Friday. I found a website called reviews.org. They took violent crime statistics from each state. They combined that with search volume for the term Black Friday deals, also by state, and then associated that to previous reports of Black Friday deaths and injuries listed by state to make a list of the top five states with the highest risk of Black Friday violence. So is your state on this list? We're gonna start from the number five position at number five, Alabama. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think she's saying oh boy because she just saw number four. At number four, <laughs> North Carolina. This is shocking. Are you, yeah, yeah. I've never gone out and seen anything crazy in North Carolina. Mm, I'm being well. serious and I live in like a pretty populated area and I've gone Black Friday shopping like all the way from like all the way to the coast. Hmm. Hmm. Do you have a lot of Walmarts out there? I, I, I will say I refuse to go to Walmart. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> well, Danielle. Well, I, well, no, I would never <laughs> chance it at a Walmart in North Carolina on Black Friday because like I've been casually <clears throat> shopping on like a Tuesday morning with my children and been in the middle of a shootout. So I would absolutely not. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. North Carolina Walmarts, you don't mess around with those. I've been yeah. caught in one too many bad situations at a Walmart. Here. Well, yeah, we're going to love when we hit uh, some of the stats that you're sharing with us here. Uh, at number three, West Virginia. At number two, Tennessee. 
And in the number one position is Arkansas, which happens to be the headquarters of a particular company. Danielle, can you guess what uh, company is the headquarters, is headquartered in Arkansas? I mean, there's a lot of companies out there, but there's something that's telling me that it may have to do with Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> Oh hey, look, I'm all about good deals. I'm all about reasonable pricing. I know that Walmart drives a huge mm -hmm. section of the economy. I know that the Walmart is a local thing to a lot of areas where they don't have a lot of choice. Mm -hmm. It's it's the place they can go to get their stuff. So they got the best produce always at the best best prices. So yeah, so I just I want to be completely fair about this, but people are we've also, also crazy. Got, yeah, we've got some incidents that are happening around this, and I want to be fair about that, too. Uh, if you're interested, the lowest risk of Black Friday violence in the number one position, Vermont, number two, Oregon, which I think might have to do. I learned a little factoid about Portland, Danielle. Did mm -hmm. you know that Portland has the most strip clubs per person? Oh, my goodness. In the nation. That might be why Oregon's on this list, I'm thinking. but Probably. <laughs> in the number three position, Rhode Island, number four, Pennsylvania. And number five, Wisconsin, which, of course, you're not going to have Black Friday violence in Wisconsin, Absolutely man. They've got awesome right. cheese and beer. Yeah, everyone's just happy having a good time. But also, Pennsylvania kind of shocks me. Yeah, a little shocked at that one? Absol that Absolutely. That is so safe? Absolutely, yes. Hmm, interesting. Oh, my goodness. It's one of the scariest places I've been to. <laughs> you got a lot of stories on your YouTube channel that have to do with uh, Pennsylvania? Yes. Some <laughs> crazy things have happened in Pennsylvania. I know people yeah. that have lived in Pennsylvania. It's no joke sometimes there. Mm. There have been no reports of Black Friday violence in the top five safest states for the last 10 years. North Carolinians have the highest chance per capita of being involved in a violent Black Friday crime. So stay home, Danielle. How have I gone out all these years to witness this happen? And I have yet in the state with like the highest chance I've yet to see anything. Danielle, I'm not going to come on this show and tell the audience we have to rename it to crime after because we lost danielle when she decided to go black friday shopping <laughs> <laughs> and that would so be it you at least better have to do a great story on it <laughs> yeah it would have to be one really really exactly. good story yeah. they've also compiled a list of what locations had the most black friday incidents can you guess which location was number one i think i can Starting from the lowest and going to the highest, Kohl's was only 3.6%. I can see that. You know, I went into a Kohl's once because uh, they also take Amazon returns. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to like do the shipping, you I just take that it to was Kohl's. So weird. Yeah. Yeah. And I swear to God, I thought the place was closed. Like mm -hmm. I walked in and there was nobody. Nobody's there. You don't know where the employees are. Like the parking right. lot, the parking lot is always empty. The parking lot's empty. Half the lights are off. I know. And it feels like you're walking into an abandoned building. It does. But they have tons of stuff in there. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I dropped my thing off and I got the heck out. <laughs> I left. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Best Buy, Toys R Us, and Target, they actually all tied at 7.1% of incidents each. Not bad. And then the mall came in at 17.9%. And you guessed it, Walmart beats all other locations combined, you guys, at 57.1%. That is huge. Wow. In wow. terms of types of incidents, being trampled is the most common at 30%, which we've all seen the videos, so mm -hmm. I can see that. Then shootings at 26.7%. And that one actually kind of shocks me. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of, uh, I mean, there's occurrences like that. There's actually a website that keeps track. Yeah. And there's been like, I think, 10 deaths since 2008 or something like that. Um, it's not quite as high, but there's a lot of shootings too where it doesn't usually result in a death. So yeah, yeah. I was kind of surprised at that number as well. Mm -hmm. And then car incidents at 16.7%. I guess a lot of people get in arguments yep. around like parking spaces and then things happen around cars as well. Yeah, like yeah. parking spaces. And then when I was looking into the different statistics, I, I saw that, you know, people are, they come to specifically go scout out cars and break in and right. get stuff because people will get loads of stuff and then pack it into the car and go to another store. Because where I used to live, it was like a shopping mall type. It wasn't a mall. It was like an, I don't know how to describe it. But like it was a string of stores all outside. You'd get your stuff from one store, pack it in the car, walk to the right. next. And it was just so I can see that. And then stabbings at 13.3%. 
not too surprised. And lastly, fighting and pepper spraying are tied with 6.7% each. I like that they split fighting and pepper spraying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> like it's different. It's like, oh, I only pepper sprayed and we weren't fighting. Oh, boy. <laughs> Same people that they hired to create all these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, we, of course, we do want to tell you guys the extra stories or some of the extra stories we found as well. Danielle is going to start this one off. In 2010, 22-year-old Mario Johnson from Memphis was arrested in Walmart on Black <laughs> Friday for indecent exposure and disorderly conduct. Apparently, multiple other shoppers began to complain to employees and the security guard that there was a man walking around with his pants sagging absurdly low. Like, to the point where you could see everything if you're picking up what I'm throwing down. And uh -oh. they were, yeah, they were alarmed. So, the security guard approached Mario telling him, hey, boy, pull your pants up, which he refused. It, this started a screaming match between Mario and the security guard and ended up landing him in handcuffs. What? Mario, the, the underwear was on sale. I know. Good <laughs> or <grief>. the belts. <laughs> Good. I, I'm just like, but to me, that was such a funny story because I'm like, all these other things are happening, but this man, like, imagine, would you get arrested for on Black Friday? It's like, oh, my <laughs> pants were too low. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> my boys were showing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, I've got a story about a mother of three who decided she had to shoot some pepper spray into a crowd of shoppers to keep them away from a video game system that she really, really wanted to purchase. Guest store... Guess what store this was in, Danielle? <laughs> People are going to make a drinking it? game out of this and be like, say shot yeah. every time. They oh, say, that's such a good say idea. Walmart. <laughs> yeah. I tell you guys what. Rewind this episode right now. Good and luck. every time we say Walmart, take a shot. Good luck. <laughs> uh, police reported that the woman used the pepper spray to get ahead of the rest of the customers, not in any kind of self-defense. Up to 20 people suffered minor injuries. The California woman was able to pay for her merchandise. So consider this. She sprays everyone. Mm -hmm. She gets, and I've seen different takes on this. It's either a Wii or it's an Xbox 360 mm -hmm. or it's a PlayStation 3. She gets the video game consoles, goes up to the front, pays for them, goes outside. But then she later surrenders herself to police. So once she's got the good deals that she was really there for. <laughs> then she surrenders. See, that's like a, but that's, I will say that's a step above what I would do. Because I would surrender as I was walking out. Right, right. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So now we have 62-year-old Jerry Poe from Clinton, Tennessee, got himself into a very tricky situation on Black Friday of 2012. There was a radio that was on sale that year, and Jerry absolutely had to get it for his grandson. He waited for five hours outside of Walmart and unfortunately was not able to snag the radio. So he decided the best way around this was to rush to another location, which in my personal opinion, that's already like... It's not happening for you at this point, <laughs> but it was around 5 a.m. And he was so worked up over this radio that he became infuriated with the other drivers on the road. He began to swerve behind a woman that was going too slow. Oh, no. And so he eventually got so fed up that he pulled out a 40 caliber pis pistol. I was about to say pister pistol and <laughs> fired a few shots at the car. Now, a 40 cal? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not good. No, it's not good at all. And what's even worse is that Jerry didn't know that the woman he shot at, her husband was following her in a car behind. And her husband was also a sheriff's deputy. Oh, my God. So, you know, obviously turned on lights, pulled this guy over. They found another gun on Jerry. So now I'm like, wait a minute. This man was bringing two guns with him out to Black Friday. He clearly was willing to shoot them. I'm honestly thankful this is the only situation that happened, but his excuse was that he was just trying to scare her into going a little bit faster. If only that worked. Yeah. I've tried. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't it work. Doesn't. Nope. No. And he ended no. up being charged with aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, and reckless driving. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of terrible. I mean... It, what, is she supposed to know that there's people out there that are going absolutely crazy because they need to get to some place to buy a radio? I know. And I, that's what I'm saying. A radio, too, out of all things. I'm telling you, it's like all rules just go out the window. People yeah. become crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of crazy, 2009 in Queens, New York, police said that a 64-year-old man was shot 
in the stomach over the new flat screen TV he was taking home on Black Friday. Three robbers ambushed him. They shot him. They tried taking off with the TV, but there was one problem. It was too big to fit in their car. So they left without it. The the thieves were not apprehended. However, thankfully, the man did survive. What on earth? Yeah. It's like everyone just like screws their head open, takes their brain out, and then ventures outside like a mindless zombie on Black Friday. It's It's crazy. Let's shoot this man before even making sure we can fit this TV in our car. Yeah, I'm hoping people are listening to this episode and and maybe thinking twice. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I know. Just like, hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. And and honestly, I did bump into other research that's like, you know, the deals that you think you're getting on Black Friday, mm, it's not as great as you think. If you keep your eye out, you can find similar sales that happen during the year. And we've got these events that are happening like Black Friday in July and all this Mm -hmm. stuff that they're doing nowadays, uh, in particular for this year. I think that you're going to see, I think Cyber Monday is going to be much stronger. Yeah. Um, and you're going to see those deals kind of extend. And Amazon has had that forever already exactly. where they have like time frames for specific deals to happen. And you know what? You get the same rush. Like I I don't think you need to be somewhere pulling something away from someone. I don't think so either. And that's what's almost scary is it's almost like people go out hoping that happens. Like how I go out and I'm like yeah. ready to see something crazy happen. It's like my form of entertainment after stuffing my face with a ridiculous amount of food. <laughs> Because I don't watch football. I clearly need some other entertainment. And so, but I mean, but you're right. You, there, if you do so much research, you'll see that majority of the time, the big things that people do go for, like these TVs and everything like that, it's, they're like specifically made for Black Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not actually getting a great quality product at a cheaper price. You're paying for exactly what you're getting and just being tricked into it. There's not really... I've never understood it. I will look at all the ads and I'll be like, what is, I don't, I'm not seeing anything. (laughs) I'm not seeing anything that I want (laughs) that's like (laughs) worth going out in this. But I don't know, you guys, who is going to win this month? Audience, now is your time to vote on who had the best Black Friday crime story. Of course, you can do that in two different places, either at our Twitter account, at Crime After Pod, where you can vote for the first seven days after the episode drops, or you can also head over to www.crimeaftercrimepodcast.com and you can vote there. We have a link in the description box below, and you can still click the little eye up in the corner of the video. It'll just take you to the same link and direct you to the website. Yep. And at that website, you can also find all the links you'll ever need, including where to find more content by Danielle and myself, how to suggest show topics, join our Patreon or shop our Teespring store where you can find that new pick your winner mug. And don't forget, we've got that art contest. It could be your art to pop up, pop up. Pop up. Your art's going to pop up. <laughs> no, it's going to pop up in the Crime After Crime store next. Possibly if you do a really good job. Mm-hmm. We hope you do. And as always, thank you so much to our patrons. You guys get a bonus Patreon special segment monthly. This past one was hilarious, which you will actually be seeing in the future if you become a Patreon. Just mm-hmm. trust me, it's a good one. Plus mm-hmm. the Patreon patrons get a special shout out in an upcoming Patreon special. Yeah. And also worth noting, I don't think we've said this too much, but we have different levels there mm-hmm. and you can get different stuff. So yeah. like if you want a crime after crime magnet, if you want a picture that's signed by myself and Danielle, uh, you've got options for that too over at the Patreon. Yeah, come on there and we'll give you cool stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to be back on this version of the show on December 1st with a special episode. It's still the holidays. We've got other topics to touch on. We are going to be looking into Yuletide crimes. Mm -hmm. So basically crimes that happen around the holiday season. I think that's pretty wide, Danielle. What do you think? It is pretty wide. I have a feeling it's going to have the same vibe as, you know, Black Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a, I have a feeling that somehow, even though we've got so much to pull from, mm-hmm. our stories are going to have some weird connectivity like they always do. Always. Always and forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this show is produced and hosted by myself, Daniel Hallen, and John Lorden. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on. And the best way you can help others find us is to tell them, tell your friends, tell your family that you love crime after crime. And we love having you here. We sure do. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.
Bye.